Well, Zeus, what do you think of the snow? Well, our first snow of the year. <laughs> it's a good day. We'll be back to this. It's probably going to rain now. Probably going to rain. But it looks cool. Early in the morning though. It's still dark. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Zeus likes the snow. Okay, moving on with the day. See this little guy? <laughs> it's gonna be next year's next year's Christmas tree. This beast just fell. Don't want to stand underneath that. It's raining now. It was snowing, obviously. Just look around. Pretty easy to see. It's super soggy now. It started to rain and then uh, slush everywhere. Uh, so I'm in boots. Hey, Rue. Looking kind of soggy there, big guy. Yeah. Watch out for falling snow. It's everywhere. Hey, buddy. Oh well. Uh, I don't think I showed you guys this. Look at this. Ta-da! For everybody that watched my New Year's... New Year's? This is the end of the year video. So thank you to everybody. Said, well, I'm gonna get on with cleaning this. Well, I didn't quite clean it enough that day. So finished cleaning that up and organizing and a few days ago. <laughs> this paddock will be full soon. It's exciting. And then one more after that, whom I saw today for a trim. <laughs> now this is a soggy horse. Hello, soggy horse. Why do horses like the rain so much? You know, why do you like the rain so much? You always stand in the rain. She always stands out in this stuff, just looking around. See the raindrops get on the lens. Okay, this is going to be this is going to be a quick video. I wanted to talk quickly about um, uh, rain scald or uh, mud fever or scratches. I've come across it today and I haven't seen it in a really long time so I haven't really covered the topic in a bit. I've got some pictures of it. Uh, the last time I really really had to deal with it was Gosh, just years ago. I haven't seen it in such a long time. And uh, fix the gator, by the way. Pump up the tire again. But look at this thing. Snow. I'm looking for my hat. Hang on a second. Darcy blows. Okay, so rain scald or, or scratches or pastern dermatitis or whatever. Um, now I need my I need medical supplies. It's in here. So let's take a look. We need to. It's important. It's super important. There's that. That. And that. And I think the rest is in my my uh, other bag. So we gotta go get that. Man, all my tools are in my truck, obviously, because I just finished uh, today's appointments. Okay, with tool bag in hand, let's go back to the small barn, talk a little bit about this. So, as I was saying, I haven't dealt with this in a long time. And I wasn't dealing with it, but I did have to deal with a horse that was dealing with it. And these types of things... Uh, let's turn the lights on. Oops, a little. Okay. So, 
the the the, the I, if you don't know what mud fever is, uh, look it up. Uh, I'll show a couple pictures. That I'm sure I can find. I'm not sure if I have any video treating it. If I can find that, I'll put it up. Um, but it's 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 really quite serious. <clears throat> Actually, no different than rain stall, which is essentially the same problem in the back. Usually on the usually on the um, the back of the horse, like not the back back of the horse's back. And so I have a few suggestions. And one of the one of the things I always think about is. Uh, when I see it, I think, well, how long has it been? Well, how did it happen? Which is kind of ends up being a little irrelevant because it doesn't matter. You just got to treat it anyways. But how long has it been there? Uh, what has been done up to this point and what can be done from this point? So um, any, any type of this mud fever that's been around for more than, say, a week or so, two weeks is pretty long. It's going to get bigger you're 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 looking for it to get smaller you want to catch it as fast as you can and it's really just these little tiny scabs that that form because the skin has a problem with it there's some kind of bacteria in there it's 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 abraded it's it's created a scab over top to help protect but um uh, it, it can very easily especially in unclean conditions spread and get get a lot worse so let's see let's see so what I generally recommend for this kind of thing and I found it to be very effective now this is not veterinarian advice so take this for what it is as somewhat anecdotal and um, successfully anecdotal in my opinion <laughs> um, but essentially the the biggest problem is that it's dirty it's dirty it needs to be cleaned and uh, so that's your goal. Your goal is to get it clean. Now, plenty of horses, when they've got it, they've had it for a couple of weeks or longer even, um, it's on the pastern, it's on the, just above the hoof. And you know, you go to touch it or anything like that, they get pretty touchy, especially on their back feet, it gets even harder. Front feet are easier, the back feet, they're more likely to try to kick. And then, <laughs> well, that's uncomfortable. So what you're, you're thinking about is uh, safety, obviously. But as best as you can, whether you gotta soak it or whether you can kind of lightly scrub it and stuff, want to try to get some of that scab off. Because it's the scab that inhibits anything from getting in, including the good stuff. So if you can clean it and properly treat it and create your own scab on top of it, it'll heal much, much faster. So here's the deal. Here's the thing we wanna do. Um, and I don't obviously have any mud fever horses here. If I did have one, I might show you, but essentially it's going to, it's going to be, hang on, one second. Okay, so pastern. Um, generally the, the, the scabs and stuff are gonna be on the back, but sometimes you'll get them to come around the front and they'll be, they'll kind of climb up the leg over time. When they start to climb up the leg even further, you're probably gonna have some swelling. You're probably gonna have probably a lean horse but the, the thing is is that they become sensitive throughout the whole leg and foot so when it comes to cleaning the, the the foot or trimming or if you're into shoeing you shoe they're going to be that much more sensitive which is why it's so very important to get this cleared out as fast as you can so when you've got a horse that say they're okay with you touching it you can kind of start to work at it you can soak it and get it cleaned up a little bit you don't want to take scabs off that cause bleeding if you do cause bleeding well You'll have to make sure you take good care of that. Um, but generally, it's just surface level. So it's no different than if you had a scab on your own skin. You pick it off, it starts to bleed a little. You put a band-aid on it, it would just scab up again. The, uh, the hemoglobin will come in and say, ah, oh, no, no more bleeding, and it will stop. So what you're doing is you're, you're going to the back of the hoof and, or the front or wherever it is, or the leg. You want to get those off gently as best as you can, as slow as you can, really. You're not in a rush. It's not a rush thing. Now, some people suggest that you should wear gloves when you do such an event because it's catchy, you can give it to other horses and stuff. Um, so that's a good suggestion, nothing wrong with that suggestion. Now, once it's clean with 
you know, just straight water. You don't necessarily want to use salty water or something because uh, it can hurt. If you've ever had an open wound, chuck a little salt water on there. I'm sure you'll understand. Um, after that, betadine. Betadine is a great, it's a surgical wash. So essentially, you're, you, don't, you don't have to use it full strength at all. You can probably dilute it 30% or so, maybe 50% if you want to go stronger. But um, uh, and, and, and I usually use um, a squirt bottle like this, and uh, I will just spray it down. Um, and, uh, and really kind of try to rinse it as best as you can. When you're done that, you can towel it a bit. It's just some, I don't have my paper towels in here. They're probably in the shop. Let me just take some paper towel to sort of uh, dry that off a bit. Then after that, after that, you can take some, I've got uh, uh, some zinc fax, which is a, uh, just a, it's, a, it's zinc oxide. And there are, let's see if I can find it on here. Okay, so right down in the bottom somewhere in there, I don't know if that's going to be visible, it says how much zinc oxide it is in here. This is just 15%. This one here is... This one as well is 15%, but you can buy ones that are 40% zinc oxide. They're more of an extra strength. They cost a little bit more. But this this kind of little doodad, this little thing, I mean, it lasts, it lasts a long time. So you really don't have to... You, I mean, you could easily treat a lot of horses with just one of those little ones, but I always carry lots of it just in case. If you can get uh, some of this on there and just liberally, I mean, just, you could just cake it on if you want to. Not thin little bits. What you're trying to do is create that scab that they would create. Okay, so you do that. It'll generally stay on for at least a day, maybe two. If you're lucky, maybe three if they're not traveling around and brushing their pastures on a lot of stuff. After that, or I mean, every day check on it, but when it starts to get down enough, you'll want to give another clean, grab your betadine, give it a good wash, reapply your zinc oxide, and generally, if it's not too bad, um, just the little ones, you'll have that gone in about a week. If, if it's bigger, it'll take a little longer, because it is a, a wound, an open wound that has to kind of close up, and the skin has to come and close up and seal it off once again. Um, so that, that, that is definitely my best suggestion in that regard. But, but if you have a horse that is a big problem, you're like, no, don't touch my feet anymore. So this is only that you can touch their feet a little bit more and you might apply it on. It actually will feel a little bit good, especially if it's cool. But if you don't, you can take a, this one's empty and broken, it's garbage. <laughs> this one had some, this one I bought, it had uh, some fly spray in it and it's all bejeweled. I bought this one, my kid, craft fair. Um, anyways, you just take a little bottle like this and uh, spray the, uh, the hoof with, um, essentially I would suggest uh, you know, even even if this is a little bit much though, so I wouldn't want to squirt it on, but this is just 10% generally. I put about, you know, this much betadine in and then the rest is all water. Um, and you can do the same thing for these things. Just put a little bit in, the rest is all water. A light spraying will go a long ways um, because all we're trying to do is make the area moist. Then grab some, you don't have to grab Gold Bond, but I think this is just about the only brand out there. But it's a, um, uh, a foot foot powder, or this one says body powder. But this one um, is extra strength. So I recommend it. There's another one, an orange or a yellow bottle. Not that one. Buy definitely this one. And then just start putting it on as, as much as you can. What will happen is, because this is zinc oxide as well, what will happen is, is it will bond with the moisture that you put on the pastern it will create this zinc oxide barrier and you sort of want to put on enough just to make a powdery outside when you put the foot down a little bit should kind of come off after that you can leave it alone for quite some time uh no different like you know at least a day or two or something like that is if you're doing this but it won't create as thick of a barrier so you have to keep a sharper eye on it again all you're really doing is trying to keep the outside out 
Um, this does work a little bit better, obviously, because inside is petroleum jelly. Uh, that's very handy. So if you can get this on, get it on. Um, but this will work in a pinch uh, and can be very good for those touchy horses. So uh, there you go. That's your tip of the day. Hopefully that's been kind of interesting. Uh, I thought I'd bring it up because um, here's the topic at hand today. I thought it'd be a good one. So anyways, I'm going to get on with the day. And uh, I'm going to see you guys again tomorrow. Because uh, i just got so many things to do. I don't believe I'm going to have the camera back out and uh, working on videos. But thanks for watching. And uh, see you guys again tomorrow.